as Robinhood CEO answers questions about its role on Wall Street. Yeah, Illinois Representative Sean Kasten pointed out the lack of help available to users of that app. No human there to answer the call. That was the call to the Robinhood app helpline, which disconnected then after 12 seconds. Representative Kasten is joining us now to talk more about yesterday's hearing. And, and Representative, talk to us a little bit about what Robinhood is doing. Do you feel it's taking advantage of inexperienced traders? Um, so it's worth explaining it. First of all, thank you for having me here. It's worth explaining a little bit about Robinhood's model. They're a brokerage. Brokerage is a typical thing, right? And so if somebody wants to buy a stock, let's say you want to buy, I don't know, a Tesla for $100, you call a broker, say I want to buy it. And traditionally, you would pay them some commission for then finding someone who wants to sell that stock to you. So far, so good. That's what Robinhood does. They don't take a commission from you, though. What Robinhood does is they then go out and find a buyer they use what's called market makers, companies like Citadel in Chicago, and they get paid based on how much money that buyer makes. So they have an, they have an economic incentive to bring in customers who are uninformed, not very sophisticated, so that their true customers downstream can make as much money as possible. It's a gross conflict of interest in their model. And you know the reason that I made that phone call is that Alex Kearns and Naperville um, young man, 20 years old, not old enough to buy a beer, was trading some fairly complicated options products on their platform, got an alert from them that he was had lost $730,000, which was about $710,000 more than he had, and called their helpline, didn't get an answer, sent emails, didn't get a response, finally got a response that said, our mistake, you don't owe us money, and by that point, Alex had already taken his own life. That well, is what happens in, in a model like that when you're not being responsible. And one of the people, you know, that uh, that you got to question there in these uh, hearings was the, the CEO. Um, when you took him through that tragedy of that uh, loss of life with that young man, what was his his response? And did you feel that it, it was appropriate? Um, you know, I don't want to be a mind reader. He certainly said that he was heartbroken. And I can imagine if I was in his shoes, I'd be heartbroken as well. Um, the, but the fact remains that that was June of 2020. That was 20 months ago. And I wasn't planning on pulling out my phone in that hearing, but, but he had told several of my colleagues before it got to me that they've really taken a hard look at themselves and improved their helplines. And so I just dialed the number as I was sitting there waiting for my turn and went hmm. to that. And I'm thinking, this is shame on you. Um, if, if you care about this, you would have taken actions to fix it long ago. What were you hoping to get out of this hearing? Do you want to dissolve Robinhood? Do you want to keep other uh, trading apps like this from coming into existence? Um, look, what, what I want to make sure is that we have a functioning, robust financial market where people can participate in our financial markets, but where we have guardrails to protect people. As I, as I said in the hearing, um, we want to make sure that people have access to markets, but we also want to make sure that there aren't conduits to feed fish to sharks. And I think what's important is that if we have a little bit more understanding of where some of the economic conflicts of interest lie in this industry, then we can fix those so that, 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 that the people who make our financial services work, who make a profit at doing that, can at least know that their profit incentives are aligned with the kind of world we want to live in. Well, Congressman, before we let you go and before you have to let the dog out, I want to switch topics for a minute here and get your take on uh, the United States finally uh, rejoining the Paris Climate Accord uh, with the Biden administration. Uh, it is it is terrific news. I was you know I was part of the House delegation that went to Madrid a year and a half ago to represent the United States, even though the United States had opted out and it's delighted to be back in there. We need a leadership role at the global table. And I, I, I guess I just share with you, when we were in Madrid, a European parliamentarian came up to me and he said, this issue is so important and no country other than the United States has the moral authority and the, the global clout to lead and we need you back. And so, you know, I'm, I'm delighted we're back. That's the start. Now we have an obligation to provide the leadership role that the rest of the world so desperately wants from the United States of America. All right, Representative Sean Caston, we know that's a big part of your professional life before you went into public service, so I want to get your take on that. Thanks for joining us this evening. My pleasure. Thank you.